How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi, and welcome to another Ratchet & Clank video. Maybe you were waiting for this video, I'm not too sure, but hey, let's go. So completely out of the blue, an animated episode of Ratchet & Clank appeared. Yeah, just like that. I stumbled on this thanks to this tweet made by Ratchet Galaxy. They happened to share a link to a page on Crave, a Canadian streaming service. What is Ratchet & Clank? Life of Pi, you might be asking right now. I think I said the Life of Pi on Twitter. Little mistake on my part, I just, for some reason, imagined the in the title. It's simply called Ratchet and Clank Life of Pi. You probably have lots of questions right now, like, is this the start of a brand new animated series? Is this only airing in Canada? When was this announced? Or was it, I mean, who made this? To give you a bit of sigh of relief, yes, this episode is planned to air worldwide sometime later, at least according to one person who was involved with the production of the show. On February 12th, Ratchet & Clank Life of Pi popped up on Crave, and absolutely nowhere else. It's currently exclusive to Canada. Since I reside in Canada, I subscribed to the network and got the chance to watch it. Fun fact, if you too live in Canada, you get a 7 day free trial on Crave. I've seen it a couple of times, this episode. Enough for me to share my final thoughts on it, which I'll share later on in the video. But what is more important right now is to keep you guys in the loop. To try and make you understand what the heck Life of Pi even is. You've probably read my community post on my channel, which I edited a few times. If you didn't read it, well, you've come to the right place. So, the first thing I think I should do is talk about the company. This mysterious episode was produced by Mainframe Studios, a division of WoW Unlimited Media Inc. WoW Unlimited also has Frederator Network as another division, as well as Channel Frederator Network. The former has produced 19 series, for example, Castlevania on Netflix being an original series, Fairly Odd Parents, My Life as a Teenage Robot, even Adventure Time. Frederator also produced 250 short films for companies such as Netflix, Amazon, Google, Nickelodeon, Sony Pictures Animation, and Cartoon Network. So now I guess it explains why Sony, yup, Sony, was willing to give Mainframe Studios the green light after the failure of the Ratchet & Clank movie in 2016. As a matter of fact, at the start of the episode, it clearly indicates an association with Sony Interactive Entertainment. It's surprising to see Sony willing to yet again team up with a third-party studio. At this point, you'd think this episode would be handled by PlayStation Productions, Sony's in-house production team for television shows based on their games. So no, it doesn't seem to be the case. By the way, Mainframe Studios was known as Rainmaker Entertainment, the same company behind the Ratchet & Clank film from 2016. Rainmaker had announced a couple years back, in late 2016, that they were basically restructuring under WoW Unlimited Media. Ratchet & Clank 2016 was so bad at the box office, the team had to eventually restructure. Not just due to poor sales of Ratchet & Clank Movie 2016, but the reviews weren't exactly what they had hoped. All of that resulted in 50% loss of what they had projected for Ratchet & Clank 2016. So back in 2016, Raymaker thought it'd be a wise decision to work alongside Frederator, eventually branded themselves as Mainframe Studios under WoW Unlimited Media. So again, this mysterious episode getting approved by Sony ain't too far-fetched if you think about it, seeing as how Mainframe is now closely connected to Frederator Studios, which is a well-established production company. A familiar name pops up during the opening credits. Under executive producer, we have Brad Foxhoven, who formerly was known as producer at Blockade Entertainment for the Ratchet & Clank movie. Blockade seems to be no more, completely defunct. Foxhoven doesn't even mention Blockade on his Twitter anymore. The old website is still up and has never been updated. Looking at it, it looks so sad. So when I mention Blockade, both this company, Blockade, and Rainmaker were involved with the Ratchet & Clank movie. Heck, 
the same was going to happen for Sly Cooper. Both companies working together, but you know, look what happened. The Sly Cooper movie just never happened. We believe it was shelved in favor for the TV show, but uh, we have no idea what's going on with the TV show. So back to the point. What is Life of Pi? On the same day that the show popped up on Crave, IGN's Jonathan Dornbush was so curious about the sudden pop-up that he got the chance to get official word from a Sony spokesperson. This is what Sony had to say about Ratchet & Clank Life of Pi. Ratchet & Clank Life of Pi is a standalone, licensed animated special created and distributed by Mainframe Studios. The show is not related to the upcoming Ratchet & Clank game for PlayStation 5, and is not official canon to the franchise's video game narrative. So two things here. Considering this is official word from Sony, Life of Pi has no relation to the actual series, nor Rift Apart. In short, Life of Pi is its own standalone thing. Despite the timeline of the episode seeming like it's part of the 2016 continuity. I'll get to all that once I start sharing my thoughts on the episode itself. On the same day, Mainframe themselves spoke out on Twitter. Get your Omni Wrenches ready, the all new animated special Ratchet and Clank Life of Pi is now airing on Crave in Canada. In this brand new adventure, Ratchet and Clank need all of their skills to foil Dr. Nefarious's latest plot, involving his greatest invention yet, the Portalizer. There's also co-director of the episode, Craig George, who announced this animated episode on his LinkedIn. I would never have expected LinkedIn being a source for the episode's announcement, but hey, in the end, it's part of his work, so it's understandable announcing it there. Ratchet & Clank fans, I'm super excited to announce the broadcast of Life of Pi, the Ratchet & Clank special I co-directed with the multi-talented Mike Alcock at Mainframe Studios. You can see it February 12th on Crave. Kudos to all the creatives at Mainframe, it looks amazing. Something to wet your whistle on before Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart comes out in June. What is one thing in common right now? What word has been repeated three times? The word special. Or two words, animated special. So are we looking at a one-time animated special? Or is this potentially the start of a full-fledged animated series? Well, let's not break your head over this. Maybe you had guessed this in the beginning already, but uh, Mainframe confirmed on Twitter that this is in fact a one-off thing as sad as that may sound. What's unusual though, both the writer of the episode, who we're unfamiliar of, John Derivlani, and music composer Rich Walters, also unfamiliar to us, while well, both on their blogs, we notice that Ratchet & Clank Life of Pi is actually a pilot. Hmm, indeed. Looking at the writer's LinkedIn, wrote pilot and adapted best-selling, Sony PlayStation video game series Ratchet & Clank into an animated TV show, Vancouver, Canada. Mainframe does have locations in both Vancouver and British Columbia, if you had no idea. This was back in 2018. In fact, the end credits scene for Life of Pi states 2019. It seems like this episode went on full production in that year. Now, as for the personal website of the writer, you can find the following. Ratchet & Clank TV series, adaptation of popular Sony PlayStation game, premieres February 2021st, and it did premiere on February 12th on Crave. Rich Walters' website mentions Ratchet & Clank animated series pilot for Sony slash Mainframe Studios. The thing is, apparently Mainframe's website had stated that Life of Pi was a 26 episode series. Now it just says special. It was probably just a glitch. Just reading this tweet right here. Or maybe they took that down because of error on their part. Whatever the case is, it's just a one-off thing. Even Crave took that info down according to Ratchet Galaxy. I'm just stating what's written in the article. I personally did not notice the number 26. Now what's weird here? Whatever the original intent of this episode was, I mean, if it was produced in 2019, well actually if we go off the writer's information, 2018, could they have been planning a pilot, only to scrap it later for unknown reasons? If you think about it, one group says it's an animated special, and then you have Mainframe specify that it's a one-off thing. Then, of course, you have the writer and composer state that it's a pilot. Methinks, 
The original intent of Life of Pi was to have it be a pilot, to see if the episode would garner enough attention to eventually turn it into a full-fledged show. Plus, the fact that work on this started in 2018 makes it seem like they had originally planned more for Ratchet & Clank Life of Pi. I keep using the word pilot. Just out of curiosity, you might ask, what even is a pilot, Vivi? A pilot is usually served as a way to garner enough attention for the show. Enough, in fact, to greenlight a full-on animated series. The production company tries to sell the show to a network, in this case Crave Canada, and see if it merits an actual series. A pilot also gives you a sense of what the nature of the show would be like. As for why Sony hasn't given this more attention is completely unknown. Like I said, maybe Sony scrapped the idea of calling this a pilot and then just thought, okay, let's just air it on Crave, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Let alone Insomniac Games, they pretend like this episode doesn't even exist. No clue if Insomniac Games even consulted this episode. Regardless of the original intent of Life of Pi, it's just weird to see the developer not say absolutely anything about it. <coughs> now the idea is, the pilot episode can be very different than the final product. Final product, in this case, we could be talking about differences in character personalities, even animation. We simply have one episode, and it seems like it's going to remain that way. Unless us fans trying to ask Sony that we want more. Realistically, if we want to show Sony that we want more of Ratchet & Clank animated episodes, well, we're just going to have to watch it. A lot. Sony's simply going to, out of curiosity, look at the viewership of this episode to see if it captures enough attention. However, it seems like it's not that possible to prove to Sony that people want this, because two reasons. Number one, it's exclusive to Canada. There's a wide range of Ratchet & Clank fans outside of Canada. Number two, they're not marketing this whatsoever. If they're not gonna market this, no one's gonna be aware that a Ratchet & Clank animated episode exists. How are they supposed to increase viewership if they're not talking about it? If anything, this should have aired on HBO Max at the same time it aired on Crave. Canadians can even have access to HBO content via Crave. But, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Former Rainmaker CG supervisor Stephen Elford and now VP Creative Technology on Life of Pi has explained that this episode is planned to be viewable worldwide eventually. As to why they're making this a timed exclusive on Crave is beyond our comprehension. Like before, what baffles me the most is the fact this episode isn't being talked by Insomniac Games and Sony to the fullest scale possible, especially considering the fact that Life of Pi is in anticipation of Rift Apart. This isn't a case of a show getting leaked, it's simply an episode appearing right out of the blue and within a small circle. And that's it. Heck, the main voice actors are credited in the show, so why is this not being talked about? Anyway, with all of that out of the way, now is the time to share my thoughts on Life of Pi. Firstly, what's with the title, Life of Pi? While Pi in this case would refer to pizza having layers which resemble the dimensions of a pie. When Nefarious saw that huge layer on a pizza, he was disgusted by it. Does he hate pizza or does he just hate having all those layers on it? <laughs> now I'll read the official summary on Crave. While on an intergalactic pizza run, Ratchet & Clank discovered that the diabolical Dr. Nefarious has developed an interdimensional portal device that would allow him to rule the entire multiverse. The intrepid duo spring into action, liberating the portalizer from Dr. Nefarious, and then racing off to securely lock it away in a weapons museum. But along the way, they run into a bumbling Captain Quark, who uses the weapon to accidentally unleash a sentient, pizza-topping mob upon the citizens of Galactic City. It's up to Ratchet & Clank to battle the Savory Horde and keep the portalizer out of Dr. Nefarious' evil hands before he uses it to destroy the galaxy. The concept of the idea, pizza toppings causing havoc, is unusual. I mean, if this were really a pilot originally, and not a one-off thing, then I guess, sure, okay, it's a pilot, but it's not a pilot. 
they either just call it an animated special or a one-off thing. If, let's say, this show were to ever continue, you know, an actual animated series, then maybe they'd decide to call it a pilot and have lots of things get changed. Imagine one complete season of this show. Imagine if Life of Pi were to become a full-on animated TV series. I think it would have much more potential than the movie, and why? Because two things. One, I literally watched Ratchet and Clank. For those who've seen the movie in 2016, you probably know what I'm talking about. At least I hope so. Life of Pi is what the title says. It's Ratchet and Clank, a duo going on an adventure. It's not like in the movie in 2016 where Clank is tossed to the sideline, thus the movie coming off as Ratchet and Quark. That was the biggest problem with the movie. Ratchet was curious about becoming a hero in the movie. He jumps in as a Galactic Ranger, and then Clank just spends time with another character. In other words, he felt like a background character when he shouldn't be. Life of Pi seems to be self-aware of the problem the movie had, that it didn't stick to its core. That core being the title, Ratchet and Clank. Life of Pi seems to know exactly what the title is. So that right there for me is already mass improvement. I make it sound like they're gonna produce like a full-on animated series, no, I'm just saying. Like, it's better than the movie. One thing I've also noticed in the title, the font is exactly the font that was used for the comic series, a comic book which took place after the events of A Crack in Time. Comparing both fonts, there's slight variation in the color scheme. Okay, if you really think about it, a one-off animated special of 23 minutes manages to handle the duo factor better than the 90 minutes movie. Yeah, pretty crazy, ain't it? That already tells us that a TV show would have a much better chance than the movie. So, having watched Life of Pi a couple of times, I don't hate it, I don't love it, it was okay. Like I said, it at least followed the intention of the title right. Ratchet being with Clank. One thing I liked when watching this, it did manage to make me laugh. If a show or a movie is capable of doing that, capable of garnering both the attention of an adult and kid, well, congratulations. That too gives hope for a potential TV series. However, as much as I laughed during certain moments, there's some moments where either the joke wasn't necessary or just didn't work. The whole thing about pineapple topping on pizza, some might think like the joke got old, but as an adult, who hates pineapple on pizza by the way, it's something I can relate to. Just seeing them poke fun at the thought of pineapple on pizza, it was a good laugh. Especially when Quark thinks he'll swiftly walk into the pizza dimension only to realize he would fall flat on the ground, utterly confused. That was a good laugh. King Topping of the pizza dimension was funny, I'll give them that. Some might think the designs of those toppings don't even suit the world of Ratchet and Clank, but you have to realize we're simply dealing with different dimensions. I appreciate the fact they brought the Suck Cannon. Not just the Suck Cannon, but there's also references to other weapons, like the Groovatron, even the Taunter from the 2002 original. That was such a lovely surprise. Another cool thing, Clank's Hollow Gloves, I believe, originate from Secret Agent Clank. Yeah, that's how far they dug into the series, which is pretty fantastic. I have to say, I love the Chimpomatic. That look of utter disgust and anger towards Quark, looking at Ratchet's face. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> One thing that's a bit weird, they took the Dynamo of Doom from A Crack in Time and reintroduced it as Nefarious's invention, the Bio-Obliterator, when the Bio-Obliterator is supposed to be this huge machine. I wasn't, like, uh, annoyed by it, but I found it weird. But hey, considering the fact this show has nothing to do with the video game's narrative or Rift Apart, it's its own thing, after all. Speaking of references, the show seems to be using assets from the 2016 movie, from the overall models of our characters to actual objects, in this case, Ratchet and Clank's ship. I have to admit one thing, Ratchet looks much more fuzzy in Life of Pi compared to the movie. Now, during their conversation in the ship at one point, Ratchet brings up Clank's undergarments. I saw this tweet on Twitter, so I thought I'd show it in the video. I think this person's right. They made reference to that old art of Clank's, which is pretty cool if you think about it. As for Galactic City, it does remind us of Illyro City, or in other words, 
planet Kerwan, but the planet itself in Life of Pi doesn't even remind us of Kerwan. Now upon closer inspection, the shape of the weapons museum looks oddly familiar. It almost looks like the building from Megacorp, doesn't it? I mean, what do you think? It's like they took inspiration of the shape of that building from Going Commando and implemented it within Galactic City. So back to the show's plot. This is where I realized they pressed complete rewind on Ratchet's character development in the series, like above and beyond. I don't know if this is their way of garnering the show to children, I get that. But what I watched in Life of Pi is Ratchet throwing almost a temper tantrum. He sort of acts like a brat. Yes, Ratchet grows up to become a hero, maturity evolves throughout the series when it comes to Ratchet. I get the idea of Ratchet not being the mature character we know right now, like looking at his personality in Rift Apart. You know, if the show happens, surely the show will start with Ratchet, who hasn't developed as the character we know yet. Because if you want to start an animated series, you obviously want to start from the beginning, as to have newcomers understand who Ratchet is and how he develops as a character. I get what Mainframe was trying to do. Ratchet being curious on what it's like going on an adventure. The show's summary even states the duo trying to free the portalizer from Nefarious's hands, alluding to the idea that Ratchet and Clank are heroes. But what I watched seemed like the opposite. Ratchet is actually intrigued with Nefarious's new device, the portalizer. In this case, I feel like they took inspiration of the idea of Rift Apart in different dimensions. Instead of calling it the Dimensionator, they went with the Portalizer. Anywho, in this scene, Ratchet wants to mess with Nefarious. He wants that portal device to send them to the Pizzaverse. Because from what I learned from the episode, Ratchet didn't like Cosmic Crust Pizza, which Clank had managed to get 10 coupons for, you know, a free pizza. Instead of being concerned that Nefarious wants to rule the dimensions and cause havoc with his new device, Ratchet just acts like a toddler, wanting that cool toy he just saw. Ratchet in the 2016 movie wanted to become a hero. We saw that. Yeah, Ratchet's personality in the movie was too much of a boy scout, but he wanted to become a hero. He was much more mellow in the movie. But we can't forget that Clank was tossed aside, being a major issue for me at least personally when it comes to the movie. Now in Life of Pi, they got the duo thing right, going on an adventure. But Ratchet, assuming they're trying to dive into Ratchet's less established lifestyle as a full-grown hero, his character in this show steps away too much from his actual more mellow character. Yes, in the 2002 game he acted rude towards Clank, but he grew from it. Maybe Ratchet was too rude, what we call jerk Ratchet. What I'm trying to say here, too rude or jerk as in Ratchet is unappealing to kids. Wait, isn't Ratchet supposed to be the hero? Why is he a jerk to his friend? You know, that type of mentality. Remember, studio director Chad Desern at Insomniac Games back in 2016 said this about his personality change. Ratchet has become more relatable, naturally over the years. He was sort of a jerk in the first game, so he used the more determined, heroic Ratchet that has evolved over the years. That would explain his change of personality in the movie. Not saying I agree. In fact, I don't. In fact, I don't quite understand that mindset. He was a jerk, yes, but he learned from it and developed as a character. Ratchet was like, what, 15 in the 2002 game? He was getting accustomed to having a friend, and as the series went on, Ratchet became a more mature, established hero, that's it. Yeah, he started off mean, but he was inexperienced. Anyway, back to Life of Pi. I feel they pressed too hard on the rewind button. If this were a pilot, sure they would change it for the actual animated series, if it happens, one day. Like I get that he hasn't reached that maturity level of a hero of the galaxy, if that is what they were trying to aim for. But Ratchet here, assuming he's not 10 years old riding a spaceship, he acted out of character. Ratchet's not a child, he's just a character that's yet to gain experience with Clank. At least that's how I assume a TV series for Ratchet and Clank would start. Unfortunately, as kids' market is changing, I don't expect that old edgy type of humor from the PS2 saga. I understand that part. They want to appeal to kids and all. But don't just alter the nature of our characters. That's one thing some people didn't appreciate from the 2016 movie, you know, Boy Scout Ratchet. He wanted to become a hero, sure, but keep the character personalities to its core. Another example of this, 
How Clank is portrayed in Life of Pi, he seemed like himself in the beginning, relying on numerical values and calculating their chances at survival, all that jazz, but as the episode went on, like Clank dealing with Ratchet's non-typical behavior, something felt off. If this was Mainframe's attempt at describing Clank, it wasn't that great. Clank in the actual game series started off as a robot who was all about numbers, calculations, still is, but the difference was that he had no social experience with organic life forms. Clank in the video game series slowly started becoming self-aware. Years being on Ratchet's side, Clank got that familiarity of his surroundings. But in Life of Pi, Clank is too self-aware. Not in a good way, at least his presentation wasn't great. Clank realizes that Ratchet hates Quark. Alright, that's not too unusual if we stick to the premise of this timeline being around the time Ratchet not being fond of Quark. Heck, Quark's presentation in Life of Pi at least was good. You know the bumbling idiot trying to get attention all the time. It was there. Yeah, he did play a bit of a villain part, but it's typical Quark, you know, messing up everything. But when Clank realizes Ratchet hates Quark, Clank purposely wants to annoy Ratchet by having Quark escort them to the weapons facility to guard the portalizer. Clank is not like that. Sure, Clank realizes the mistakes Ratchet makes and wants Ratchet to correct them, looking back at the series, but Clank purposely annoying Ratchet? Nah. That's unlike the nature of Clank. What works within their dynamic? Clank poking fun at Ratchet, you know, laughing, or Ratchet poking fun at Clank. We've seen that type of behavior in the video game series. That's what their relationship is all about. But not these two acting like kids towards one another. Look, Nefarious, they did him good. Seeing Nefarious in actual proper character was quite enjoyable, especially the fact they brought back his glitching with Lance and Janice playing. But Nefarious is not the same without Lawrence. He did shout at Zed, but it's not the same feeling as shouting at Lawrence. Zed alone just goes to show what asset they used from the movie. Even at that, why didn't they just pick Lawrence? Now going back to Sony's statement, how this has nothing to do with Rift Apart and the series, well that explains Zed working for Nefarious, because in the movie, he gave up that role of working for the bad guy. So yeah, Life of Pi is truly its own thing. If we imagine an animated TV series in the future, and Zed is with Nefarious, do you feel like Nefarious would yet to encounter or meet Lawrence? That's something I would imagine at least. How about you? Another thing about this episode, Ratchet and Clank have no experience with encountering Nefarious, so yeah, it really is its own thing. I didn't mind the animation. Yeah, it does come off choppy at times or not as smooth, but it didn't bother me that much. The character models, well, looking at Ratchet especially, some shots he looks good, some shots he doesn't look that good. Now the thing is, Mainframe confirmed that this is a one-off thing. If this were truly a pilot, like what the writer and music composer stated on their page, probably the original intent of this episode, then maybe I'd be willing to forgive the episode for having some of these problems, because in the end, an actual series might look entirely different than the pilot. If this animated special is indeed used in anticipation for Rift Apart to wet our whistles, then considering that Rift Apart releases in four months, it's weird that it airs so soon. It kinda makes you think that yeah, maybe this show did plan to have 26 episodes. But yeah, that doesn't seem to be the case, so with that being said, folks, this is it for the video. If you have any questions, thoughts, or anything of such sort, leave it all in the comments section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, and thank you for always tuning in. Until next time.